Hello, and welcome to the Drug Discovery World podcast, a podcast covering topics around drug discovery and development, pharma and biotech. My name is Giles, and I'm here to take you through this episode. Today's episode is the feature article from our recent summer 2018 issue, and is titled Precision Medicine Drugs, Pleonasm or Reality. The article was written by Dr. Urban Kiernan and Dr. Stephen Naylor. So now on to the main article, Precision Medicine Drugs, Pleonasm or Reality. The complexity and uniqueness of human metabolism and physiology in the past decade has been highlighted and dissected. Arguments have been made to suggest that our lack of understanding about human individuality has led to the limited efficacy and safety of many marketed therapeutic drugs. The drug discovery and development process continues to slowly evolve to address this perpetual problem. More recently, with the advent of personalised and precision medicine, there have been efforts made to address individual complexity. An understanding of personalised versus precision medicine is necessary in order to understand such endeavours. This has led to the development of what have been labelled targeted or personalised medicine drugs. Based on the differences between the N of 1 model, personalised medicine, and the 1 in N model, precision medicine, we propose that a more appropriate name is precision medicine drugs. Such issues will be what we'll be discussing in the rest of this episode. There appears to be a considerable disconnect between the expectation of stakeholders and the pragmatic demands of bringing a therapeutic drug to market. The drug discovery and development process was conceived in the early 1960s and has remained relatively unchanged over the past 50 plus years. It continues to be risk laden, slow, costly, and inefficient, as well as delivering products of questionable value in terms of safety and efficacy. For example, Cumulative risk is associated with any effort to bring a drug to market. The initial screening of compound libraries leads to a single lead compound that has only a roughly 8% chance of successfully traversing the clinical trials gauntlet. In addition, the failure rate of a drug candidate at each stage of clinical trials is reported to be 46% at phase 1, 66% at phase 2, and 30% at phase 3. The average time required from drug discovery to product launch remains an eye-watering 12 to 15 years. Finally, the total capitalised cost of bringing a new drug to market was recently estimated at a staggering $2.87 billion. The metrics associated with the drug discovery and development process are clearly problematic. There is also a concern about the value proposition of current, marketed therapeutic drug products produced by the drug discovery and development process. And we'll now discuss these issues in turn. Firstly, drug safety. Not all approved drugs stand the test of market pressures due to the scrutiny of pharmacovigilance and post-market surveillance. In some cases, approved drugs can be removed from the market because they manifest safety, effectiveness or economic problems. For example, from 1994 to 2015, the USA Food and Drug Administration issued 215 withdrawal of application notices. During that same time period, the FDA actually recalled 26 drugs from the US market, predicated primarily on safety concerns. And the second issue is drug effectiveness. There is now a significant body of evidence that indicates individual patients diagnosed with the same disease indication respond differently to the same therapeutic drug. For example, Spears and co-workers analysed the effectiveness of a number of different drug classes against major disease indications. They found that most drugs were 50-75% to effective, as determined by patient responses. The lowest patient responders occurred with conventional cancer chemotherapy at 25%, whereas the highest percentage of patient responders was treated with COX-2 inhibitors at 80%. Therapeutic drugs were reported to be ineffective for Alzheimer's at 70%, arthritis at 50%, diabetes at 43%, and asthma at 40%. And the third potential issue is pricing. Approved drug price points are determined by market forces that include drug safety and efficacy differentiation, market need, patient acceptance, 
sales and marketing strategy, and IP position, as well as individual R&D costs. In many cases, pharmaceutical companies have used rampant R&D costs to maximise prices charged to the patient or consumer. Unfortunately, even in such a favourable economic climate, only 3 in 10 approved drugs generate revenues that are at least equal to or greater than average R&D costs. It has been argued in the past in DDW by the authors that the blockbuster model has inadvertently led to the wagon of woe for the drug discovery and development process. This model focused on a one-drug-one-target mechanism that was potentially safe and effective in a large but heterogeneous population. The solution has been suggested as the use of more efficient technology, decision-making tools, systems biology, and personalised and precision medicine in order to overcome the limitations of such a model. More recently, the authors of this article presented the concept of a combined systems biology personalised precision medicine approach to the development of more effective and safe therapeutic drugs, particularly in the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. In this manuscript, they introduce the concept of targeted or precision medicine drugs, which is a logical outflow from a combination of systems biology and personalised and precision medicine approach to drug discovery and development. Personalised and precision medicine In order to understand the concept and nomenclature of a precision medicine drug, it is important to first appreciate the subtle but real differences between the terms personalised versus precision medicine. As with any new and emerging field of endeavour, clear definitions are often a work in progress as terminology evolves and or disappears. In the case of personalised and precision medicine, it is complicated by the fact that these terms are often mistakenly used interchangeably as umbrella descriptors. Hence, the terms personalised and or precision medicine and how they are practised have broad and confusing interpretations. Firstly, personalised medicine. Historically, personalised medicine emerged in the early 2000s. The Personalised Medicine Coalition, PMC, founded in 2004 to represent the interests of the then-fledgling personalised medicine community, defined personalised medicine as an evolving field in which physicians use diagnostic tests to determine which medical treatments will work best for each patient. By combining the data from those tests with an individual's medical history, Healthcare providers can develop targeted treatment and prevention plans. Other pioneers of personalised medicine continued to stress the importance of the individual. The belief was that actionable understanding of disease and wellness as a continuum of network states unique in time and space to each individual human being is possible. Reedcop and Madsey have surveyed the literature and the plethora of competing definitions of personalised medicine. They concluded that the most appropriate definition for personalised medicine is the use of the combined knowledge, genetic or otherwise, about a person to predict a disease susceptibility, disease prognosis or treatment response, and thereby improve that person's health. They reinforce the idea of specific analyses for treatment of the individual patient. And now, precision medicine. The term precision medicine was first coined by Clayton Christensen in his book, The Innovator's Prescription, published in 2009. However, the descriptor, precision medicine, did not gain wide acceptance and usage until a report entitled Toward Precision Medicine, Building a Knowledge Network for Biomedical Research and a New Taxonomy of Disease, was published by the US National Research Council, NRC, in 2011. The report laid out a series of recommendations for disease ontology predicated on molecular information content in the form of causal genetic variants or genomic information rather than a symptom-based classification system. This prompted a firestorm of activity, and the initial focus of precision medicine was on genetic and genomic underpinnings of disease. For example, the Institute of Precision Medicine provided an early definition that stated Precision medicine is targeted, individualised care that is tailored to each patient based on his or her specific genetic profile and medical history. Unlike traditional medicine, where one size fits all, practitioners of precision medicine use genomic sequencing tools to interrogate a patient's entire genome to locate the specific genetic alterations that have given rise to 
and are driving his or her tumour. This type of approach garnered significant attention, but it was difficult to discern the fundamental differences practised by the precision medicine versus personalised medicine communities. Differences between personalised versus precision medicine The NRC Council report in 2011 attempted to define and differentiate precision medicine from personalised medicine. The report stated, Precision medicine is the tailoring of medical treatment to the individual characteristics of each patient. It does not literally mean the creation of drugs or medical devices that are unique to a patient, but rather the ability to classify individuals into subpopulations that differ in their susceptibility to a particular disease, in the biology and or prognosis of those diseases they may develop, or in their response to a specific treatment. Preventative or therapeutic interventions can then be concentrated on those who will benefit, sparing expense and side effects for those who will not. Although the term personalised medicine is also used to convey this meaning, that term is sometimes misinterpreted as implying that unique treatments can be designed for each individual. It should be noted that the word precision in precision medicine is used colloquially to include both accurate and precise scientific measurement. However, based on the NCR definition, it is clear that the precision medicine approach utilises individuals and defined subpopulation-based cohorts that have a common network of disease or health taxonomy. In addition, it requires an integrated molecular and clinical profile of both the individual as well as the subpopulation-based cohort. Zhang has described precision medicine, predicated on the individual patient subpopulation model, as one step up from the individual patient focus of personalised medicine. Implicit in his statement is that personalised medicine is based on a single individual N of 1 model, whereas precision medicine uses a 1 in N model, predicated on widely used biostatistical data analysis and big data analytical tools. Precision medicine can best be described as an amalgam of personalised medicine and modern conventional medicine. It is clear that precision medicine has attracted huge attention and is in the ascendancy compared with personalised medicine. The attributes of the 1 in N model of precision medicine have been more accepted and rendered into practice compared to the challenging N of 1 model of personalised medicine. A number of disease area specialities have started to query or implement elements of precision medicine into everyday practice and treatment of patients, and they include such diverse areas as diabetes and Alzheimer's disease. In particular, the oncology community has been quick to embrace and reduce precision medicine to practice in the diagnosis and treatment of a wide variety of cancers, and has pioneered the development and use of targeted or precision medicine drugs. Precision medicine drugs. In this episode, we have discussed the limited efficacy of currently available therapeutic drugs. These efficacy limitations also apply to blockbuster drugs. For example, the effectiveness of Kimbolta, duloxetine, treatment for depression, only applies for 1 in 9 patients. Copaxane, glatorama acetate, for multiple sclerosis, is 1 in 16 patients, and for Nexium, esomprazole, for heartburn, it is 1 in 25 patients. Even more stunning is the report that the widely prescribed class of blockbuster statin drugs used in the management and treatment of elevated cholesterol levels is only effective at a 21% response ratio. Such poor efficacy has led to a reassessment of the clinical trial process. Imagine if a manufacturing and QAQC process resulted in your smartphone only working 10-20% to 20 of the time in an emergency situation. The classical form of clinical trials requires the compilation of a number of specific measurements from thousands of selected patients. This is a costly, time-consuming, risky and inefficient process. In an attempt to enhance clinical trial design and potentially account for patient variability, a number of other approaches have been utilised. A basket clinical trial utilises a specific biomarker, often a genetic marker, in oncology trials, and a mode of action for the candidate drug against a number of related disease indications. In contrast, an umbrella trial tests the effectiveness of a myriad of drug candidates 
against a single disease indication. More recently, Shork has suggested an N of 1 clinical trial in which a systems-level analysis of data is collected on an individual patient who is being treated with a therapeutic agent. In all cases, the intertwining of appropriate biomarkers, companion diagnostics, and mechanistic understanding of the drug mode of action are driving such efforts. Definition of a precision medicine drug The oncology research and clinical communities have pioneered the development of targeted therapies. It was long recognised that in a patient population with the same clinical disease state, heterogeneity of the molecular etiology and development of the tumour led to different therapeutic responses by individual patients. However, a targeted therapy may be effective in a subpopulation of patients who have different underlying molecular similarities. The PMC has extended this concept beyond just the oncology sector. When evaluating new medical entities, NMEs, approved by the FDA, PMC categorized personalized medicines as those therapeutic products for which the label includes reference to specific biological markers identified by diagnostic tools that help guide decisions and or procedures for their use in individual patients. However, we would propose, based on our discussions in this episode concerning the differences between personalized medicine, N of 1 model, versus precision medicine, 1 in N model, that it is more appropriate to refer to them as precision medicine drugs. It is important to note that the physician utilizes the biological marker or markers listed on the drug label in prescribing the precision medicine drug. This should not be confused with companion diagnostic biological markers. There appears to be widespread agreement that a companion diagnostic is a biomarker used in a specific context that provides biological and or clinical information that enables better decision making about the development and use of a potential drug therapy. In recent years, the use of companion diagnostics has found broad applicability in clinical trials and are used in the optimised selection of clinical trial patient populations. In particular, they have found use in selection or exclusion of patient groups for treatment with that particular drug in determining responders and non-responders to the therapy, as well as early indications of adverse toxicological effects. Case studies of precision medicine drugs Firstly, Herceptin. Herceptin, trastuzumab, is a humanized monoclonal antibody and targets the HER2 receptor in breast cancer patients. This drug was developed and sold by Genentech and Roche. The FDA and EMA both approved its use in 1998 and 2000, respectively, for the treatment of breast cancer, but only for HER2-positive patients. Herceptin became the first targeted or precision medicine drug to be approved, although at that time such terminology was not in common usage. The development history of Herceptin is instructive in the evolution of targeted and precision medicine drugs. In the late 1980s, Professor Slamon at UCLA and Professor Gullick at ICR London reported that some human breast cancers manifested overexpression of the HER2 gene, as well as the protein product HER2, resulting in a poor prognosis for the patient. Gullick, in conjunction with Dr. Barnes, Imperial Cancer Fund Research Unit Guy's Hospital, reported that HER2-positive tumours were much more aggressive than HER2-negative tumours. The fact that HER2 protein was present at high concentrations indicated it was a good target for therapeutic intervention to treat HER2-positive tumours. Dr. Sikowski and colleagues at Genentech developed a monoclonal antibody to target HER2 protein, and the antibody was ultimately named Herceptin. And the next case study is Gleevec. Gleevec, amatinib, is a 2-phenyl-aminopyrimidine derivative and acts as a specific inhibitor of a number of tyrosine kinase enzymes. The drug was developed and is now sold by Novartis. The FDA and EMA approved the drug in both the US and Europe respectively in 2001 for the treatment of chronic myeloid leukemia, CML. However, The drug was approved, and thus prescribed, only for patients with Philadelphia chromosome BCR-ABL positive chronic myeloid leukemia. The journey of Gleevec 
began with the observation by Noel and Hungerford in the early 1960s that a number of patients diagnosed with chronic myeloid leukemia had an abnormally short chromosome. This characteristic chromosome was named the Philadelphia chromosome after their home city. Additional research revealed that 95% of patients with chronic myeloid leukemia had this unique chromosomal marker. Subsequently, Heisterkamp demonstrated that when the Philadelphia chromosome is formed, the result produces a fusion gene labelled BCR-ABL. This new gene produces a fusion protein, ABL with BCR, breakpoint cluster region, termed BCR-ABL, which was recognised as a potential disease-specific druggable target. Dr. Drucker at the Oregon Health and Science University and Dr. Leiden, then Ciba Geigy Pharmaceuticals, which merged with Sandoz to create independent entity Novartis in 1996, investigated the drug ability of the fusion protein BCR-ABL. The rationale was that patients with chronic myeloid leukemia would have the BCR-ABL gene, and hence the fusion protein BCR-ABL, conferring highly specific efficacy. One such drug candidate, known then as SDI-571, later renamed amatinib, inhibited BCR-ABL by binding proximal to the ATP binding site. This caused a conformational change in the enzyme, resulting in a self-inhibited conformation, and thus curtailment of activity. In the first phase 1 clinical trial of the drug, the majority of patients went into remission, and even five years later, more than 98% were still in remission. This mechanism-based approach led to yet another successful targeted precision medicine drug to enter the market. Current Perspectives of Precision Medicine Drugs Last year, 2017, the Centre for Drug Evaluation and Research, CDER, at the FDA, approved 46 NMEs. However, 16 of them were classified as precision medicine drugs by the PMC representing an annual high of roughly 35% of total NMEs approved. This was the highest percentage yet reported of precision medicine drugs approved by the FDA in any one year. In 2005, only 5% of approved drugs were classified as precision medicine drugs. But there's been a steady and consistent increase over the past decade. In addition, three gene therapies were approved for the first time ever in the treatment of acute lymphoblastic leukemia Kimriah, large B-cell lymphoma, Yescarta, and retinal dystrophy, Lux Turner. Finally, and of note, the first precision medicine drug biosimilar was approved in 2017. Herceptin was approved by the FDA in 1998, and now in 2017, Orgivri, Trastuzumab, was approved as a biosimilar for HER2-positive breast cancer. Last year was also pivotal for the number of marketed precision medicine drugs that were approved for new indications. Dr. Janet Woodcock, the director of CDER, stated that these approvals point to an encouraging future for precision medicine, an approach for disease treatment that tailors medical therapies, including medications, to the needs of individual patients. In another watershed moment, the FDA approved the precision medicine drug Keytruda Prembolizumab, for the expanded indications of patient treatment with unresectable or metastatic microsatellite instability high, MSIH, or mismatch repair deficient, DMMR, solid tumours. The groundbreaking approval was predicted on the fact that only the presence of a specific biomarker was required, and not a conventionally defined disease indication. This clinical trials data that afforded such an outcome consisted of 15 different conventional oncological indications. This is in stark contrast to traditional oncology drugs that have been approved for treatment of specific cancers located in specific organs and or tissues in the body. This is an exciting harbinger for the future of precision medicine drugs and the impact they will have on the quality of therapies offered patients. Conclusions Precision Medicine Drugs Pleonasm or reality? In the early 2000s, one of the authors of this article, Dr. Stephen Naylor, formed a personalised medicine company, Predictive Physiology and Medicine Incorporated. 
The company provided a patient's predictive molecular profile in areas such as cardiovascular and neurological health and wellness. At that time, there was a great deal of focus on providing individual tools for the prevention, prediction, and diagnosis of disease states. However, there was little progress on the impact of personalized medicine in drug discovery and development, but significant discussion about how the costly, time-consuming, and risky drug discovery and development process could provide therapeutic drugs for individual patients. The conclusions at the time were that such efforts were prohibitively expensive and economically unfeasible. However, the advent of precision medicine and its focus on the grouping and identification of subpopulations, one in N model, as well as the tools to identify such populations, led to the concept and implementation of precision medicine drug discovery and development. In 2005, only 5% of all drugs approved by the FDA were precision medicine drugs. Last year, that percentage has risen to an all-time high of 35%, and in 2018, is predicted to go even higher. The pharmaceutical sector has recognised the value of such an approach, and it is clear that precision medicine drugs are here to stay. They are indeed a reality, and not a pleonasm. The authors would like to thank Dr. Darrell Pritchard, Senior Vice President for Science Policy at the Personalised Medicine Coalition, for helpful comments and correspondence during the article preparation. This article was written by Dr. Urban Kiernan and Dr. Stephen Naylor. Dr. Urban A. Kiernan is a co-founder, CEO and board director of iMetabolic Biopharma Corporation, a biopharmaceutical company that is developing precision medicine drugs for the treatment of obesity-related diseases. He has almost 20 years of industrial experience in the biotechnology and life sciences fields. In the past, he served as a global business development manager within the laboratory consumables division of Thermo Fisher Scientific. He previously served as the director of biomarker discovery and a principal investigator while he tenured with Intrinsic Bioprobes Incorporated. He has a PhD in Bioanalytical Chemistry from the Department of Chemistry at Arizona State University. Dr. Stephen Naylor is co-founder, COO, and board chairman of iMetabolic Biopharma Corporation. He is also the co-founder, CEO, and board chairman of ReNeurogen LLC, a virtual pharmaceutical company developing therapies for the treatment of neurological diseases. In addition, he is the founder, chairman, and CEO of My Health Inc., a systems network biology level diagnostics company in the health and wellness and precision medicine sector. He was also the founder, CEO and chairman of Predictive Physiology and Medicine, PPM Inc., one of the world's first personalized medicine companies. He serves also as an advisory board member of Cure Hunter Incorporated, a computational biology drug discovery company, and as a business advisor to the not-for-profit Cures Within Reach. In the past, He has held professional chairs at Mayo Clinic. He holds a PhD from the University of Cambridge in the UK and undertook an NIH-funded fellowship at MIT. If you've enjoyed this episode, then you can subscribe to the journal free of charge by visiting dgw-online.com. Our full 2018 issue has just come out, so if you register, you'll be able to get your free digital copy. If you go to our website, you'll also be able to view full articles, including references, and download original PDFs of past articles, including this one, and you can find links to this specific article in the show notes. If you've enjoyed the podcast, as always, we'd massively appreciate a review, and you can follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. Thanks for listening, and we hope to see you in our next episode.